Well, I just wanted to do a little bit of carving on this uh, excellent medium we have here with these pine knots, you guys. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of self-torture, I must admit. But, you know, I call it almost hack and whack. Because if you guys have carved these pine knots before, you know this stuff is like a um, hard, glassy wax or something. It's very hard. And, of course, you saw that I was roughing them in with um, the power outside. I have carved, I think, six or seven of them finished. But I wanted to show you guys what I've been doing here as far as finishing them on in. Uh, my main tool has been a V-tool, a medium-sized V-tool. And what I've been doing on this eye socket is coming over and making an eye socket first. And uh, you know, I, this works the best, you guys, with a mallet like this for me. You can try pushing it, but the way this stuff chips out of there, you're almost better just to go with the little tap, tap, tapping like this, see? And uh, so I'm creating an eye socket first. And of course, here's, here's a drawing. It's not what I'm doing, but it, I'm creating the socket first. This, this one actually had a little better. See the socket right here? That's what I'm setting up right now, even though this is not an end end. Obviously, we should have done this guy back when we were doing the wizard uh, thing because he's got an ice cream cone on his head, so to speak. But, you know, that's the only reason we're messing with these pine knots, you guys, is each one has the wood itself has such unique character. See here how that little old piece, I caught it, popped out of there. You, This is the type of stuff, almost like carving driftwood. You just have to deal with it. All right, I got my eye sockets kind of set up. My next maneuver, I only got about five tools here, you guys. This one is a little bit of a curve, uh, number seven. And I'm going to come right up the center of this nose. I am going to use a mallet in a second as soon as I get squared up with the nose here. Like this. See, I'm upside down with it. So I'm doing the shank of the nose. I'm going to hook a little bit off the edge of the nostrils over here. Come straight up and clean up the nose. Got to get just right. Because you'll pull off a huge, huge chunk more than you mean to with this stuff. But... I'll tell you, I might have mentioned this before in, in this tape, that years ago, I used to carve this wood out on the Oregon coast around Port Orford, Oregon. And of course, it was called Port Orford Cedar. And this stuff reminds me a lot of it. It's, uh, of course, Port Orford Cedar actually carved better than this stuff does. But it's the same real waxy type of a wood like that. The other thing, these pine knots are growing. I don't know whether you guys can see the grain in the forehead here. But they grow in a circle because this was a limb coming out of the center of the tree, right? So the grain is weird. If you catch it just wrong over here, you'll pull off a whole layer there. Now. Notice I'm cleaning up here the tip of the nose. What I have been doing is capturing just a little bit of the nostril here and here. I've done most of the roughing in. Of course, you guys saw me doing it with the power. Now, I'm setting the wings of my nostrils here, you guys. But notice that I'm going at an outward angle. 
and I'm trying to get them halfway straight across from each other the best possible. Every one of these guys take on a different character depending on how you set up wide nose, skinny nose. Now I'm pulling some of this stuff away from the nostril here and here. We've went through this on other faces on stuff. and This is actually the first video that you guys have seen me use power uh, like that die grinder the other day um, when I was roughing them in out there in the yard. And, you know, it depends on the wood, because if the wood's carving good, I actually prefer using gouges and stuff. But if I have to like this, I mean, I'm sure you guys are going, well, why is he even messing with these pine nuts? Well, it's the unique character. We're going to take you out on the porch here in a minute and show you guys um, the different character. I'm basically carving the same face in almost every one of these guys, but the character of the wood makes them different. Okay, I kind of got a nose going. This V-tool has been my biggest friend. Uh, I'm going to start above the nostril here, come down around the wing of the nostril and I'm going to start opening up the mouth barrel over top of his uh, mustache. Now you saw I was starting to get a little deep there and I was hesitant to, to go much harder with my mallet because I have had a big old chunk just pull right out of these things. So I'm starting here at the top of the nostril hooking just a little bit around his cheek and down his nose, and then in here at the top of the mustache. See how that stuff just pops out of there almost like you're carving glass or something. Uh, really, it's not that much different than stone carving in a way. Uh, stone does it, acts that way. It pops loose like that, you know. Now, I got my sockets kind of set up, got the wings of my nose set up. I cleaned a little. I might show uh, some lip here. Like I said, I found that this one V-tool actually has been my primary tool because it chips things out so nicely. So we'll leave a little bit of a... Um, lip going on there. And I'm throwing some directionals in his mustache. The wood itself is doing most of the talking. Now, the, while I got this feed tool in my hand, I'm going to come up and over where his eyebrow is going to go. Here. Now here's where you got to be careful going that way because the grain is in a circle and you'll hook behind a piece and just pull off a big old huge chunk if you're not careful. Uh, I'm throwing some wrinkles in across his forehead, see, you guys, and maybe even a harsher wrinkle here. And now let's just throw a few directionals for his eyebrows in here. If, if you guys have never uh, carved a pine knot, you should try it just to kind of know that, you know, it, it's not as easy as you would think it is. But we're doing it for the different character that each individual pine knot gives you. So I'm giving him a few directions on his eye uh, eyebrow here. 
Now I have to be careful here. I'll hook a big old chunk, which I have done on a few of them. And all you do is just carve deeper, you know, fix your fix your little mistake and go on. Um, all right, basically got him laid in here. I am gonna take this same V tool. Now I do have a smaller V I could be using here, but believe it or not, this mid-size V seems to be doing what I need to do here. I get him, and as you can see, I'm not even drawing. I've done so many of these over the years that I don't even waste my time drawing on them or anything like that. I, I'm just hacking and whacking them in there. Um, actually, kind of fun. I, I haven't carved pine knots in several years. And one of the things, uh, stories that I was going to tell is, and I might have said something about it earlier, about one time I had about two or three dozen of these things carved up. And I went down to Branson, Missouri. And, of course, that was back when Pete Engler was still alive. And I walked in and I started showing the different characters to Pete. And Pete, he always supported all of us woodcarvers. Um, he bought all of them that I had from me and wrote me a check for him right then, you know. And I always liked Pete because anything that I took in that shop, he would always, the reason he didn't want just one or two is he wanted to make a whole display of um, pine knot guys, see? So when he was buying stuff, he, he would like to have all of them that you had for a display on the wall. And, uh, you know, he was a master of marketing, uh, and he brought a lot of us wood carvers. You know, Gerald Sears, uh, he was in there, and, of course, uh, Mike Crony, and, of course, Bob Robertson, Jesse Coos, uh, gosh, so many more. I can't even think of all the names now, but Pete always took care of all of us carvers as far as you go in and say, would you like to buy these? He'd say, yeah, I'll take them all, you know. So he was quite a supporter. Now, on this wizard, see, I got puffy cheeks going on here now. I might, and here's where it gets dangerous because I might pull off way more than I want, but I might want to show just a little bit of a height. Now, I better go the other way or I will pull off some here. That's one thing you learn about carving this. See how that chunk just came up off there? You learn that you got to watch out or you'll take more. But I wanted to get just a little bit of this high cheekbone on this wizard here. And sometimes it works best like this. Make a stop cut like that, see? That way when you do try to pull this here, this way, you're not going to pull off. Well, you might. <laughs> this is a surprise thing. You're trying not to pull off a bunch that you didn't want off there was the whole game. I am going to show the bottom of his face here a little bit, and here just a little bit. Trust me, you guys, this is a far cry from cottonwood bark or driftwood or from even basswood or butternut. This stuff is in a class of its own as far as crappy wood you could be carving, you know. But then the only reason we're doing this on Woodcarver's Corner is to show you guys, you know, you're out in the woods, you find something cool, like we'll show you the finished ones out here in a minute. You find something cool and you want to take it home. Of course, if you're any kind of a woodcarver, every time you find some wood out there, you want to take it home and see how it carves. 
and over the years, I'm the same way with stone, you know, I, I'm actually a stone carver too. And um, I do the same thing. I'll pick up stones all over the country. I have a driftwood pile out here that is all the time growing, you know. I'm just trying to knock off some of these sharp edges and stuff, you guys. But you know what? On a cheap little carving like this, this is a hack and whack thing. I'm, I'm getting it in there. I'm not too worried. His one eye's bigger than the other. I am not even worried about that. I found that the best way to do the nostrils, you know, if you get in there with a the little gouge, you're just going to pop them off. And the same way, I've not even been really carving much with a knife on the eyes. And this stuff is like carving wax. So here's what I've been doing. Taking my little Dremel tool. I got a little ball in there. And on that eye, I've just been kind of waving it side to side slightly. Not much. Just a little. And a little over here. Like I said, I realize the eyes, balls, or the eyes are not the same size. I don't really care. Now the nose nostril. I've been doing the same deal. Cleaning those boogers out of his nose. Here you got it. You don't have to be up in there very much. You just give him the illusion of some depth in there. And sometimes here underneath the mustache and the mouth. I've been doing just a little bit of that. Don't take much. So, uh, and I might clean some of these saw marks off from this a little bit. I'm not that concerned about it, really. Um, that's pretty much what I've been doing with all of them. And let's go outside, and I'll show you the guys that I got carved. Well, guys, it's been quite a journey from when I got back from down in Arizona with these pine knots. I uh, had a great time getting them. We were camping up there on the rim just below Flagstaff in there and we had a couple beers and went uh, stumbling around th out through the forest and found a bunch of pine knots. Had a great time collecting them. But then I, we got quite a crew here as you can see. I only got about seven hours in all these guys uh, of course I did use um, I did use power you know you got to do what you got to do w w to make a living wood carving so here's our guys of course I had high plains drifter but I did want to point out see he got a pipe in his mouth and I made it just out of a limb of a tree you know but also, some of these others, I can't remember, one of these, this one I think it was, this one, I had put a deeper hole, and you know, you could carve a cigarette, you could carve a part of a cigar, and i tell you what would make a great cigar for these guys' mouth is a piece of that cottonwood bark, because it's dark color, and it burned, take a cigarette lighter, burn the end of it, and put it in one of these guys mouth I know that smoking is not popular uh, anymore but these are old mountain men guys and uh, of course this one was Gold Pandan I named him and uh, this one was Windswept I named him you know when you're carving them you're like oh you look all windswept or something now this was Merlin that we just did and that's because his hat was just a pointed thing and I will probably carve these um, chainsaw marks off there and then of course um, this guy named Pierre because he had this kind of a French look about his hat going off to one side and then I had the High Plains Drifter which was friends with the Drifter over here they probably hung out in the mountains together at one time. 
And then the last guy, I don't know whether you guys can see him, I think I'm in the way, but that's Mexican Hat, I named him. Um, had a real good time carving them. Uh, if you guys like seeing this uh, found wood type stuff, driftwood type stuff, um, give us a, a like and subscribe on Wood Carver's Corner because we could use all of the uh, support we could get on the channel. We're trying to grow the channel, you know. Now, you might notice I got the finish on three of them here, four actually. And I did use this uh, wipe on poly like I showed you the other day on the finish. I will do these other guys, but I may I might have mentioned that I took them down. I have a sandblaster down at the shop, and I blasted all the nasty rotten stuff off the outsides. Tried to stay off their faces the best that I could, you know. So I'll finish these other guys up, sandblasting the tops and the bottoms of them. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and we will talk to you guys next time on Wood Carver's Corner.